Shalom Chavrim. I guess, you know, I'm not one of the ones that normally say breaking news, but as I'm <clears throat> beginning to piece together the pieces of this puzzle and what's really going on in Syria, is starting to come to light now. In front of me I have several uh, or a couple of articles open here that I wanted to uh, come on the air and mention before you because it's beginning to become more and more clear that the events that are going on over in the Middle East may indeed be a staged setup in order to get control in Israel. Um, so uh, with, with that said there, let me just start off by reading you a little bit here. Uh, this is uh, from an article here uh, by Barry Hamesh um, that, that writes, uh, In 1979, Yitzhak Rabin published his autobiography within was a one-line offbeat quote. He said that unlike all Jewish children growing up in Poland, Shimon Perez spent his early education as a, at a Jesuit school. It was an odd fact, he goes on to state, and I took a mental note of it without understanding its significance until I broke my first attention um, getting, story, getting story as a political journalist. And this is something that he writes here. Um, in the Chadashot, uh, excuse me, the newspaper the Chadashot. It says, in March 1994, the newspaper Chadashot revealed a most remarkable secret of Middle Eastern uh, peace process. A friend of Shimon Peres, the French intellect Marquis Halter, claimed in an interview that in May 1993, he delivered a letter from Perez to the Pope within uh, Perez promised to internationalize Jerusalem, granting the UN political control of the old city of Jerusalem and the Vatican uh, hegemony on the holy sites within. The, Uni the UN would give the PLO a capital within its new territory and East Jerusalem would become a kind of free trade zone of world diplomacy. Now, as we begin to see this here, and I, I've heard people say that, you know, Shimon Perez was a Jesuit. Well, it's pretty obvious if Yitzhak Rabin is actually, uh, he doesn't say he's a Jesuit, but just says that he, you know, he, he, um, he went to a Jesuit school. So, and of course, uh, the Pope that they have now currently, Pope Francis, uh, is from the Jesuit order. With a little unusual situation there as well, but... Um, uh, another article I'd like to read to you is um, one that um, this was something I was aware of, and this is reported by, um, um, let's see, I think it's yeah, Fox News reported this. Israeli, uh, and by the way, the article is published April 30th, 2013. Israeli President Perez says Pope has a role to play in Mideast peace, invites him for a visit. Uh, show you these articles here on the screen here. Vatican City, Israeli President Shimon Perez says Pope Francis should use his influence to press for peace in the Middle East and invite the pontiff for a visit. The Israeli Nobel Peace Prize uh, laureate met the new pontiff Tuesday. Perez also met with the Italian political leaders. Uh, Perez spoke to the Pope about peace negotiations with the Palestinians and the potential threat of a nuclear armed Iran. Perez uh, said the Pope had an important role in progressing peace. The Vatican and Israel established diplomatic relations in 1993. Pope Benedict XVI, John Paul II, and Paul and John, excuse me, and Paul VI all made pilgrimages to the Holy Land. Now, I, I, I bring these things to your attention because I, I think it's important that you understand the stage that's being set here. And there, there, are, there are some debates um, as to whether or not, um, uh, whether or not Syria, the, you know, did Assad really use the chemical weapons on his own people? Um, and uh, so that, there, there has been some debate that, uh, that, that, um, that he did not do it and that it may have just been staged any, anyway. Um, so... You know, it, it, let's, you know, there's, there's all kinds of, um, I'm, and I'm not here to try to start a conspiracy theory, uh, but I, I have to ask the question, uh, you know, he, Assad uh, denies it, of course, I know most people, if, if an, uh, people from the Middle East, if they're not Jewish, they don't tend to not believe them, um, 
And of course, Assad is saying that there's not a single shred of evidence that all these things are just staged, uh, no matter how we may find this. But, uh, but the, the point is, is whether he did or did not, you can't help but wonder, what is this all being set up for? Uh, the peace process with the Palestinians I know is a little bit shaky. It's not going necessarily according to plan. But the thing is, is that they, there, there is a need to orchestrate possibly an event that would cause a counter strike against Israel. And it, it looks to me that what, what the United States is trying to do, uh, uh, right along with the Vatican, of course the Vatican has said, they publicly are saying we don't we don't believe that they need to be bombed and, and, and it's just a front it's only a front because what they need to do is they've got to justify getting troops into Israel to force exactly what Shimon Perez was trying to uh, have done in the first place and that is to get a unilateral force there um, and to, uh, to have the United Nations there. There's many articles that have been done on this in the past. I've read them. I just quickly pulled these up for you. So I, I'm, as I begin to look at what's taking place in the Middle East, it seems very plausible that the United States will indeed, whether the, whether the American people back it or not, they will actually take the time and, and they will attack Syria. Uh, I think in that response, Assad is very much determined to, 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 to retaliate and the, really the only course of action he has is to retaliate against Israel. It may be enough to provoke Iran into a confrontation as well and maybe this is what they're wanting to do because if they can get a, a strong enough uh, confrontation provoked it may cause, if Iran gets involved, they may advance troops through Syria into Israel and then once this happens, then the United States can look like the great big warrior and say, hey, uh, we will help you, Israel, to push them back. We need to put boots on the ground with you, you know, to protect Israel, to defend Israel. That's, you know, you got to understand, President Obama, he's not a fool, but yet the thing is, is he definitely, he plays the hand that has the money, and the Vatican has the money. If the Vatican pushes his strings, you know, John Kerry no doubt is liaison between the Vatican and, and, and America, and they want that part of Israel for themselves, and they come up strong, as Daniel said, with a small people, and that's the Palestinians. So they're using the Palestinians, but the only way to get this to work because Israel has never allowed UN troops in their country, as far as I'm aware of. But they, we have UN presence there, yes, but as far as the troops themselves. And, um, and they want to make this an international zone, Jerusalem. Uh, and it's so sad that, that President Shimon Peres is willing to sell out our country for this. What, what did he get out of this anyway? I mean, what? it's appalling is what it is. And I think that God is not pleased in any of this at all. Um, and, and no doubt, we're, we're going to see a lot of things happen. So uh, as I look at the biblical prophecies that are taking place uh, and, and I look at the things that are happening, I, I just cannot help but wonder what's going to happen next. Anyway, um, I'll be researching more on this and try to keep you more up to date. God bless you and have a great day.